first yung si uh, when when he when Lino did uh, tinimbang ka ang unit kulang for his own production uh, Cine Manila yeah he he established his own production uh, Cine Manila okay no kaya nga merong Cine Manila International Film Festival it was named after Lino Broca's uh, company no? in Cine Manila and uh, that that was after Lino had already established his name in the industry. So before Cine Manila, before he established his own company, he made films for Leia Productions. Wanted no? Perfect Mother. One, yeah, right, right. Oh. Wanted Perfect Mother, Santiago, mm -hmm. uh, Lumuha Pati Mga Angel, you know, etc., etc. So he established his name in the, in the industry. And then after a few years, in uh, so that was in 1970. In 1973, he established his own company, Cine Manila, and they produced Tinimbang Kang Unit Kulang. And it was a success, and that encouraged other filmmakers or would-be film producers to establish their own company. So si Mike De Leon, uh, established the Cinema Artists Philippines uh -huh. and he knew about my screenplay uh, based on the novel by Edgar Reyes, uh -huh. Sa Mga Kukunan Liwana. Uh -huh. and uh, he asked Lino to read it, uh -huh. to read the screenplay and so and Lino um, got interested in it and he agreed to do it uh -huh. so that, that was the time I, I, uh, I worked closely with with Lino so yeah that 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 was in uh, around 69 70 1969 when I was a graduate student in communication arts uh -huh. and uh, it, there, there was a tutorial uh, on script writing with uh, Nestor Torre was it? Where was it? Uh, Sa Ateneo. Ateneo. Ateneo de Manila University. So, I, I finished my undergrad there. Sa Ateneo. And then I took up graduate studies. Also in Ateneo. And, and so, see, but I was the only one who enrolled in Nestor Torres class. Ah. In, so, naging tutorial siya. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, I did, uh, that, that was in 69-70. And so I did uh, my first screenplay, yung Pepot Artista, mm -hmm. for that uh, tutorial. And then uh, the semester was just half over, uh, tapos na yung screenplay. Uh, sabi ni Nestor, isa pa. <laughs> okay. And I did not have any original idea anymore. So I suggested that I would do an adaptation okay. of a novel, uh -huh. sa mga kuko ng liwanan. And so I did the adaptation. Was the book familiar to you? Yeah, already? in novel, uh -huh. because I, I also took up a literature class and we read the novel in that class. And, and Edgar Torres' book was uh, written in the, was it 70s also or early? No, uh, late 80s. La, late 60s, late sorry. 60s. Late 60s. Okay, okay. Um, but in the movie, it happened the 70s. The 70s. Uh -huh. uh, 70s. So, and you were just... Uh, because because we were shooting it in, in the 74. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was... Uh, nung, ano, nung natapos ko na yung screenplay, 1970, I asked uh, some filmmakers to, to read it. Si Eddie Rodriguez, you know, because I thought Eddie Rodriguez would be a fine... Uh, to play Julio Madiaga kasi mukhang Pilipino si Eddie Rodriguez and, mm -hmm. and at that time bagay sa kanya of course and uh, but he was not interested so I asked uh, who else si uh, Eddie Romero to read it <laughs> and, 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 and n nobody w was interested and and so we just mothballed <laughs> I just mothballed the uh, screenplay and nando lang na, na until si Mike decided to do films, to, to produce. Uh, that was in 1974. And then when Lino agreed to do it, so we, yeah. 
we talked about it and then Lino uh, since he, he was uh, he was already in the mainstream uh, industry and he knew about what would work no, in the mainstream and he suggested that uh, in the, the main character Julio Modiaga would be exposed not, not only to the exploitation in the construction uh, uh, field no? uh, in, in the world of the construction uh, of the construction workers that he would also uh, Lino suggested that he should also be exposed to the underworld no? in uh, the in the, the sex exploitation mm -hmm. you know, in, in the city mm -hmm. and and so he thought about you know, adding these scenes with the mm -hmm. call boys mm -hmm. so of course that's not in the novel no? mm -hmm. and I told them oh, okay we can talk about it I, we can think about it um, but you have to clear it with Edgar Doreyes okay who was still alive yeah okay. yeah at, at that time uh, yeah because they, they had to buy the rights no, to the novel uh -huh. and I don't know if they told uh, Edgar Torres about <laughs> it, you know. but anyway, so Lino and I talked about it, and uh, and I, I wrote the the scenes, uh -huh. the additional scenes, and uh, then it's much longer than what appears in the in the film. Well, uh, the the book was uh, is uh, very visual. You know. It uh, I thought that it would translate well into film. And then I was also interested in the subject, mm -hmm. uh, exploitation of workers and, and uh, the life in, in the city. Of migrants. Yeah, the coming from the provinces and working here, or being exploited, uh, sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it, it deals, the, the novel deals with issues that uh, should be interesting to us you know, as uh, as members of uh, so of uh, society, and so I thought of uh, adapting it into film. Mm -hmm. The role of uh, Nigaya was uh, she was uh, part of like a uh, white slavery ring. You know? uh, was that part? Eventually, of the yeah. Yeah, because the the recruiter, you know, promised to just give them work in the city, you know, uh -huh. like working as uh, maids or whatever. But actually, they 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 had to work in a, a casa, you know, uh -huh. prostitution house. Uh -huh. And then this Chinese Chinaman picked her up. Yeah, yeah. to be his common law wife. Uh -huh. So that's in the book also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's in the book. Everything except the call boy uh, uh -huh, sequences. Uh -huh. yeah. um, so when uh, Lino approved uh, your script, did you have to both sit together and then do revisions uh, with your original script? The, well, the main revision was the additional, the additional, additional uh -huh, scenes uh -huh. with, the, with the call boys. Uh, uh, of course, I th um, offhand, I would not have wanted to do it. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, to to mess with the novel, you know. But then uh, well, Lino explained that it, the exploitation in the in the city, the the exploitation that happens to Julio, doesn't only happen to to his work in the construction site. The, there there is also a physical and spiritual exploitation. That, that happens, and uh, th that is the rationale for exposing him to the underworld uh, sex in, in in the city. Well, and, and well, that the 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 scenes that we agreed upon uh, are longer, uh -huh. but then uh, in the in the final film, uh, it was edited down. The scenes were edit some scenes were edited out, so it's not as long as uh, uh, it it appears to, to be. Well, Lino respects his co-workers, 
and I, I was uh, l lucky that he asked me to no, he wanted to do revisions and he asked me to write the revisions because he could have done it himself or he could have asked uh, someone to do it uh, but I knew if I at that time I wanted to break into filmmaking that I should be open to it hindi pwedeng magmatigas ako na hindi pwede hindi niyo pwedeng galawin yung, yung screenplay no, I adjusted to it and uh, I, I did the uh, revisions that, that Lina wanted, and uh, and I uh, I wanted the, the film to to be done, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, if he didn't understand in the revisions that he 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 might have backed out, or he might have not continued with the project, or he might have asked someone else to do it. I know the rest is history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Did you do the title? Yung, the, the, the title, Yung Mainila, Mainila. Uh, was Lino's uh, suggestion. Because the original one was only... Sa mga pupo ng liwanag. Sa mga pupo ng liwanag, no? So, uh, Lino said that... He, he's re he was really into, you know, filmmaking in the, in the industry, no? So he knew what, what would work and what would be interesting to, to do. And uh, he, he said that if people talk about the film, sa mga kuko na liwana, sa sabihin nila, ay na panood mo na yung sa mga kuko na liwana, medyo mahaba, uh -huh. <laughs> mahaba sa mga kuko na liwana, ilang syllables yun. Uh, I think uh, the, the title should be shorter. Uh -huh. And then he suggested my uh -huh. And then subtitle na lang yung sa mga kuko na liwana, because we also want to, we wanted to sh show the audience that the 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 film uh, was based in in the novel sa mga kuko na liwanan so but uh, people would talk about it have you seen Maynila? Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's it's a nice uh, uh, nice revision to uh, you know or suggestion to what to do with the title oh, but even today people talk Maynila. Yeah. yeah yeah but the original the, the, the film is about Maynila, it's actually, Maynila. actually it's about the city you know the life of uh, the, the characters in the city mm -hmm. and the, the influence of the city in their lives so the, the city is a character in, in the yeah, film exactly, yeah. exactly. Not, not, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it, it was, it's not the first uh, to, to, to deal with that subject no? but I, I, could, I could not uh, recall not at this time what what films that we did? I am sure even the the fifties films, mga LVN and you know, yeah. uh, also dealt with people coming to Manila, you know, yeah. and uh, experiencing the the life in the city, and the problems, the issues involved. What what really what attracted me to the material is its social commentary. Commentary on the issues that uh, plague the country and, and affect our people. So that when when I wrote the adaptation, it was in in sixty nine seventy. So that's the the, the years before martial law, and uh, students like us were beginning to be aware of what's to be socially aware. You know. So that that's why the the, the novel resonated with. with with me, and, and that's why I was interested in adapting it. Um, one one specific addition in the film that, that I did in the adaptation uh, is, is the demonstration scene. Mm -hmm. Now there's a demonstration in Mendiola. Oh no no, no not Mendiola, but in uh, Moraita, Moraita, uh, across from. Uh, that that's an addition, additional s scene that that I made you know, in in the adaptation um, because I wanted to show that you know uh, at this time the, this is before martial law, 1970s and 1970 and and uh, students, workers, and workers are demonstrating you know 
against uh, the, 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 the government, uh, the fascist government, etc., etc. And uh, they, they are, the, the demonstrators are fighting for the, the exploited. And then when, when Julio Madiaga sees the demonstration, he, before he crosses the street, yes. you know, they, they, he, uh, Paul and Julio they see the demonstrators. He doesn't see the significance of the demonstration. That these demonstrator demonstrators are fighting for people like him. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, but he doesn't see it. He sees his problem as very private, uh -huh. and so he resolves his problem the, the way he wants to resolve it. And he goes back to Atex's place uh -huh. and kills him. Uh -huh. yeah. So you wanted to juxtapose that, uh, mm. that uh, disconnect between yeah. the individual and the cause, uh, specifically in that particular scene. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. And Lino agreed to that to add that. Uh, no, it's already in the screenplay. Ah. In the adaptation, when when he. Uh, Okay, no. When he read it. Yeah. Uh, do I, if you don't mind, how old were you when you wrote the screenplay? So, in 1970, I was born in 1948. Mm -hmm. So, 22. 22. Uh, and Edgardo Reyes wrote it in the 60s. Yeah, mid-60s mid or late-60s. Late so, it was already under President Marcos. Ah, yeah. yeah. In fact, I volunteered to do behind the scenes. To shoot uh, behind uh, the scenes, uh -huh. so there, there's a short uh, documentary. Oh, is it? Uh, you might want to be, to watch it too. Yes, please. Uh, about the making of my nila, because I, I really wanted to be there <laughs> and to see what they were going to do with the material. With your, with your material. Uh -huh. It was the first time that your script uh, is made into a movie. Yeah, yeah. The, so I volunteered to to shoot uh -huh. 16 millimeter camera and. Uh, so I was there. I knew it would be a, a good uh, film uh -huh. yeah. because the uh, the performers, you know, they they, see the Ben Rocco, Tommy Anuel, Hilda Coronel, they they're good uh, actors, mm -hmm. and I I saw that they were doing well uh, during the shoot. So what were you doing? In, what was your role in the in the team when you were there? Uh, what were your tasks? Sh shooting behind the scenes. Ah, you were shooting with your own camera? Yeah, with a camera. Yeah. Uh, well, Mike De Leon's camera. Ah, Mike? Uh, I was Mike was a cinematographer. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah. So he, he was the cinematographer, uh, the DOP. Uh, he, he had the camera operator too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But uh, he, uh, he lent me his camera to specifically to, to shoot the behind the scenes. And you still have that? that uh, it's a, it's a film, uh, yeah. Uh, it's part of the DVD uh, that uh, uh, released by uh, Criterion. The Criterion. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but I added features, you know. In the, in the screenplay, I specified the, the places. I specified the places? Yeah, where, where the, the scenes should, would happen. So. They they visited some of these places and maybe they they did some changes you know but yeah I, I was with the the group mo most of the time when when I was writing the the adaptation I visited some of the places that was uh, described in the novel so so that I would would see where the the scenes you know were, are happening. Uh, in fact, I was criticized for that. You know, uh, when when well, some people learned about the the changes that that happened in the adaptation, and then I, I wrote about the making of my nila, you know, and I mentioned that uh, you know I went around to check the the places, and, and I was criticized for being a tourist in <laughs> in, in my own city. <laughs> <laughs> let the pass yeah, yeah. Where was the construction site? It was in, it was the construction there. site uh, is the, it's in Quezon City. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's the present. Uh, is there an NBI building there, National Bureau of Investigation in, in Quezon City? Yeah. A anyway, that, that's the building. Ah, uh, okay. It, it was being uh, uh, constructed at that time. I remember the, the premiere uh, screening. We, we had the premiere screening. Uh -huh. uh, I don't remember the, exactly the, the theater, but it's one theater in Avenida, Avenida Rizal. And um, my, my father uh, watched it. Uh, and uh, of course he, he liked the, the film, but he said that uh, the demonstration scene was not <laughs> necessary. <laughs> <laughs> my, my father was against the uh, demonstrators, so, uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, uh -huh. yeah. But it made the uh, big stars of uh, Ben Ball, and, and Hilda. Hilda, yeah. The well, it's interesting how uh, Lino did uh, the motel scene. You know? Ori well, originally in in the in the in the adapt in the novel. The encounter between Julio and he and uh, Ligaya, it happens in a restaurant. Okay, so the, the entire thing mm -hmm. happens in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. They talk and exchange uh, their exchange uh, uh, I, stories about what happened to them in the in a restaurant. restaurant. Yeah, Chinatown restaurant, and in the adaptation. I first did it, uh, the, the encounter in the, in Santa Cruz Church. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then after Santa Cruz Church, they went to a movie house. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. And then from the movie house, uh, the, it, this is Lino's uh, 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 take on on the, the that major sequence. So from the. From the Santa Cruz, uh, from Santa Cruz Church, they moved to the theater, the movie house, yes. and from the movie house, they moved to the motel. Yes. So the the young location, the choice of the motel scene, I think it was a a, a good uh, revision from Lino, you know, locating it in the motel. But he followed the the entire dialogue, you know, for that encounter uh, sequence. So, but it wasn't a reshoot. You what didn't shoot in the uh, restaurant already, that scene between uh, Ligaya and Julio. I, I, I don't remember if, if uh, I, I remember that I uh, set it in the church. Yeah, it, it came to yeah, in the movie in the church. I don't know if they moved to a restaurant, but I, but I, I think they moved to the the movie house. Because there's a scene when they enter the movie house. Pardon? There's a scene where they enter ah, yeah, the it, movie it's house. in the original screenplay. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, and and Lino adds the the motel scene. Mm -hmm. he transpo transposed the dialogue to the motel scene. The, motel. the entire dialogue was in in the screenplay. Um, it, it, I, I like the, the screenplay because of the nuances of the characters. Mm. There is a character there who likes to sing in the construction site, mm. you know, the happy go lucky Filipino. Mm. There's a that, that's in the novel. The, those characters are in the novel. These uh, yeah. archetypes. The, uh, the, the, the construction so workers, the friends. Yeah. 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 There, there are of commentaries about, about that. But one, one major uh, commentary that um, uh, that was I important uh, in, in my view what was the was the reaction from the Chinese community. Now th there is the we. Uh, we, I, I, uh, m my friend uh, uh, who was connected with this Chinese uh, community, and he said that the, that the film 
destroyed what they worked for <laughs> because it, it uh, the, the film doesn't create a good image uh -huh. you know, of the Chinese uh -huh. in, 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 uh, in the city and uh, when well, Lino's answer was uh, the truth hurts <laughs> and uh, it, it was not meant to to give a, a general you know uh, impression or general representation of the Filipino Chinese uh, Atek is a character you know, in, in the novel a specific individual and uh, is not meant to represent uh, the Chinese, no? but uh, of course we can foretell how people would react to it, right? And, and, uh, and uh, yeah, my, my friend who is connected with this Chinese organization was was not too happy about it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I told you. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think if you show it today? It will also resonate with this. Uh, old uh, China Philippines uh, <laughs> situation that we have now. It would still be a problem, I think. But uh, uh, but the people would, uh, I think, would be more open to, to it or would understand that uh, Atik is an individual character. It's not meant to. Yeah, to uh, to generalize, you know, that this is how all the Chinese, you know, Pinoy Chinese, you know, behave in Manila. Looking at the because hindi nga maganda yung image talaga. Because there, there's a restaurant scene, you know, when Julio is waiting for uh, what what happens uh, across the street. And there is this China man, you know, slapping the waitress. You know. uh, not, not good. <laughs> Those are already Lino's tradition during the shoot. During the, the shoot, it's it's in the screenplay, but uh, the, the how how it is performed, you know, of course, it's Lino's uh, take. In fact, the the, the 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 man was improvising lines. <laughs> uh -huh. Was Lino you know, the type of director who would follow the script uh, strictly, or was he the one? The type I think so, ba based on the, that experience. No, or it, as I already mentioned earlier, if he wanted revisions, then he would consult the writer, talk it over with the, the writer. And th that was a good thing about him. Yeah, because th there would be directors who would just change uh, everything, right? Uh, or change scenes without consulting with the writer. So in, th I was lucky in, the, in that sense, that he respected the work of the writer. And then once you agree on it, then he would uh, stick to it. Of course, things uh, may happen uh, on the set, you know, where uh, some changes you know, could could be done, you know, or might might be done. On the set, he's uh, uh, fun to work with, it's a happy set. I I don't remember seeing him uh, get get mad. I I don't know. I I I, I might be. Uh, Unconsciously painting a good <laughs> image, <laughs> of, uh, you know, but but he's okay. He's good. Uh, yeah, but um, even with such uh, heavy themes mm -hmm. in the in the story, uh, he managed to make uh, the set uh, lighthearted. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Masaya, masaya, masaya ang you know. Um, looking at the movie now, do you think that uh, the concerns that were written in the book about the city and how it uh, devours the, mm -hmm. 
the hapless ones, does it still, is it still there in our city today? Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. And then there are bigger problems, no? Uh, uh, poverty is much more widespread, you know. <coughs> uh, exploitation uh, of workers. Uh, you know, the issue of endo. You know. <laughs> it's still true. Yeah, because uh, things haven't changed drastically, actually. Yeah. The, the, the percentage of the population that is uh, under the poverty line has not improved, right? So 20% to 30% of the population. So yeah, the, the, the problem um, basically is still there. And that's unfortunate, right? Yeah. So that the films that we do, whether it's Manila or Manila by Night or any other film, we would wish them to be uh, not relevant, to be irrelevant. Yes. So soon or in, in, in that they should be irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. After a while, but uh, it's unfortunate that unfortunate that they are still relevant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? uh -huh. yeah. It's a commentary on what's happening you know, in society. Yeah. Even today. Even the day. Yeah. yeah. No, no. So that was for the. the that the was only. my first and only work uh, with Lino. Uh, he he had other writers, mm -hmm. and uh, see uh, Vicky Lee, see Git Lakaba, see Butch Talisay. Mm -hmm. So, well, we did not have a chance not to, to work with Either it was his decision not to work with me, or I don't know. But, uh, and, and uh, my, my other films or screenplays were done by Mike DeLeon yes, yes. and uh, Hale Portes. Uh -huh. So actually I only worked with those three directors, Celino, C. Mike, and Hale. Well, after the, after the shoot, we uh, visited schools. To ah, you brought it along? Yeah, to, uh, to entice them, to encourage them to watch the film. Mm -hmm. And we showed the behind the scenes, the documentary, ah. and we, we talked about the making of the film. The, the, there's one interesting uh, event that happened. I, I think it, it happened during our trip to the north, and uh, there was a typhoon, and so we were stranded somewhere. and. Uh, and, and then the next day, we reached uh, the school, and uh, the students were a, a bit noisy, uh, the, the usual behavior of students, uh -huh. and uh, Lino just uh, flared up, you know, and uh -huh. got mad, and scolded them, you know, and uh, said that we almost died coming here. Siyempre, kinilaya niya na yung kwento. si Lino. So, One of the few times you saw him get mad. Yeah, but uh, exaggerated, pa rin yung <laughs> exaggerated pa rin yung story. Uh, because Lino had also a strong uh, theater background. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as a beta, part no, of, of course. Uh, part of beta. Yeah. Uh, also. I see Mike Delian. As I see Mike, was a yeah. producer of. Uh, yeah. So he established the company, Young Cinema Artists. Uh, together with his uh, relatives, uh, but he, actually he was the you know, producer, the active producer on the set. Uh -huh. And then why didn't Lino produce it himself? Because he was uh, his own production company. Ah no, iba yung cinema nila. That's his own production company. So they produced uh, Tinibangkang Unikula, yeah. uh, Mortal. So, so Lino had a problem with Mortal. It was shot by, uh, directed by Mario O'Mara. Nagkaroon ng legal problems, you know, because it was based on the life of a, a real person. And so nagkaroon ng kaso, natalo sila, nalugi yung company. Oh, it was because of that. So Cinema Artists is, a, is a, the, the one that Mike DeLeon established. And, and uh, also because Mike knew you, so you had the material oh, yeah. oh. Uh, for, oh. for 
for that. So Lino was actually hired as a director. Right. For for right. So the the Mike was a senior in Ateneo when I was a junior. So one year ahead she Linus Maynila uh, presents uh, some issues and and there there's a suggestion that the the, the situation has to be changed mm -hmm. right but in uh, Bernal's Manila by night you just live with it you enjoy it right uh, kaya the yeah, mm -hmm. marijuana dito marijuana <laughs> dito you know in life at at night uh, the the idea of uh, the man, uh, Bernal's Manila is that you just live you know you enjoy it then mm -hmm. Kelino you fight it you, you change it so it's a, a major difference that's an interesting uh, yeah. analogy mm -hmm. for, for both of them. Yeah, yeah. So, so Bernal was more existentialist mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. his view. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, so Li Lino he, uh, was really an activist. An huh? And he lived it. Uh, uh, at least he, he was not just uh, you know, doing it for a show, I guess. You know? <laughs> and... Uh, he joined demonstrations. You know, and, uh, well, I, I wish uh, the, the the films today, you know, done by the new, the younger filmmakers, the in independent filmmakers, especially, uh, they they would not just be interested in showing their films in festivals, you know, because karamihan parang yun ang goal and okay. yung aim, no? gagawa sila ng pelikula and then they go to the, the festival circuit and they attend the festivals and punta sila doon you know, and ganun mm -hmm. uh, it, it's um, it's good to be recognized by uh, you know these festivals and uh, the foreign uh, no, critics but uh, may, maybe they should not lose sight of what they are really supposed to do yeah and uh, they should not lose sight of the role of film in society mm -hmm. what it can do mm -hmm. I, I'm sure some of them are doing it uh, yeah. Yeah. like uh, the documentaries done by Dizzy Carolino you know yeah. that they are really socially relevant and that they're important works mm -hmm. so they, they have to look beyond the festivals the film festivals and look more closely at uh, how people watch their films. You know? I mean, we, we do, we are Filipino filmmakers and we do our films for our, primarily for our Pinoy audience. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Oh. If the foreign audiences love our films, then fine, but uh, they may not be our primary audience. Well, Lino and uh, the Ishmael worked within the industry. So at that time in the 70s, young would-be filmmakers <coughs> did not have any choice but to break into the industry. Mm -hmm. So we had to break into the industry because, uh, if we wanted to do films. Um, making films outside of the industry was, uh, was not the, the, the usual way. Uh, it was only Kidla you know, and a few indie filmmakers who were able to do it. Because mm -hmm. they had access to camera, you know, uh, they, they also have some money to do films, right? And uh, they did not want to join the, the industry. So they had to do their own films outside of the industry. And there were very few of them in the 70s. Kedat Tahimik is the only one that comes to mind, no? Uh, lalo na nung 60s, mas konti pa. Uh, so, uh, those of us who wanted to do films, we had to break into the industry. And Lino and uh, Ishmael paved the way for that new generation of filmmakers in the 70s 
to be able to work in the industry. So they nagsimula sila noong 1970, they established their names, kumuha sila ng mga writers, you know, and uh, production designers, you know. Before the 70s, wala nang yung mga production designers, well, hindi hindi na uso 'yan eh. No? Kasi 1970, bomba films. No? Yeah. Uh-huh. Diba? Hindi na kailangan ng, well, <laughs> you know, hindi na kailangan ng costumes, right? Okay. <laughs> Nandun na lang sila sa motel or sa bed, bed scene. And uh, there was no need for, for the, the production designers. Uh, new cinematographers, wala na nung mga 60s, you know. Uh, editors, wala, wala na rin. But in the 70s, with, uh, uh, with Lino and Ishma, they they took in new filmmakers mm-hmm. new people to new blood to 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 make films mm-hmm. and uh, so they paved that the, the way to this uh, new breed of filmmakers a new generation of filmmakers in the 70s mm-hmm. so yung mga writers mm-hmm. uh, yung mga cinematographers uh, well mga writers uh, sila uh, Pete Lacaba, si Ricky, yeah. si Roya Iglesias, si Butch Galisay, yeah. uh, si Marilu, ah, si La... And other uh, writers, no? And, and then mga editors then, si La Jess Navarro, si La Ayn yeah. Cajar Lego, uh, and then cinematographers, si La Rodi Laca, uh, yeah. And uh, music composers, uh-huh. si Ryan Kayabyab, si uh, Max Oxon, you know, and, and others. Uh, itong mga uh, young, uh, we were the young filmmakers then, no? and, 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 and we were able to break into the industry. Ngayon, it's a different story. The, the young filmmakers, the independent filmmakers don't need the industry. Mm-hmm. They can do their work outside of the industry because of the developments in technology. The, the films done by yung, mm, by s- what we just refer to them as more serious filmmakers. Mm-hmm. And the, of, of course, together with the, the films that they, they did, the, the commercial industry was also churning out, you know, uh, a lot of these commercial films. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, so they just co coexisted mm-hmm. in in the industry. So you th- you think Lino and, and Ishma were one of the first directors who insisted that they get their own writers, they get their own uh, production designers and cinematographers and editors? Was it? Uh, I I think so. They they parang they gave more premium to good screenplay good cinematography, uh-huh. good production design, uh-huh. and they were able to get these new people to come in and join them you know, and, and do the, the work. And they were also able to convince the producers to, oh, yeah. to pay for these yeah. uh, people. And, or, or they also worked with people already in the industry. Uh, okay. Like see, L- Lino worked uh, closely with Conrado Baldazar, mm-hmm. a cinematographer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, he was already established, you know, in, in the industry at that time. Mm-hmm. So he was able to work with 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 with, with him and and other uh, established uh, workers too. Um, I think what they did was to 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 make to make a name for themselves. I already mentioned this earlier. You know, Lino and uh, uh, Ishmael, they, they established their names, that they are good uh, directors. And uh, they, they were able to, to work on uh, good screenplays. Now, even if, the, if they, most of the s- films that they did were based on comics material, so they, they were able to to make uh, good films out of these uh, material. Mm. Uh, you, you, you said that you wrote a, an, an article uh, about Manila and Maynila. Yeah, yeah, I did. What were you trying to say in that uh, article? You know, the, the difference, I, I analyzed the two films and, 
uh, suggested the, the difference between the two. Ah, Lino. Uh, well, I, I remember see, seeing him in, in, the, in the States, in the US, when he, uh, when he showed Aura Pro Nobis. Mm -hmm. And we met there. Uh, he died. He died in an accident in the nineties. In the nineties, yeah. Ninety-two, uh -huh. ninety-one, ninety-two. Uh -huh. uh, I was in the states at that time, doing my PhD work. I came back in ninety-four. So, so that was the news I heard uh, when when I was there. Uh, it was an accident. So, yeah. of course, it was not. Uh, it was a sad news. You know, but, uh, And, and actually it marked an end of a, an era you know. uh, because the, the, our generation of filmmakers that Lino and Ishmael paved the way for, it, it happened in 1970 mm -hmm. and uh, continued up to the 80s. Kasama na dyan sila Mike De Leon, si Peke Galiaga, si Mario Diaz Abayas, Mario O'Hara, Loris Guillén, mga 1980s sila, sila Marilu and Loris, 1980s, pumaso. Um, and then, after the, after martial law, when uh, Cory Aquino took over in 1986, unfortunately, uh, the, the country was beset with major economic problems, you know, that uh, uh, film did not develop much uh, during those years and uh, so in the 90s when um, uh, about uh, at about that time um, Mike De Leon uh, practically stopped uh, filmmaking mm -hmm. Marilu Diaz uh, m moved to television uh, doing television work si Loris Galien was do busy with her Marian devotion mm -hmm. you know uh, and uh, so when Lino died, it was about the end of that generation of filmmakers. And uh, a new generation was uh, taking over or more active in the industry. Sila Joey Lamanga, Sila Joey Reyes, Chito Ronio, you know, at the time. Uh, so it, then Ishmael also died not long after uh, Lino did. So, yeah. Of course, uh, some of us continued working in the in, uh, in film, you know, even, but the young generation na yon, yung pamamayag pag nung generation na yon, patapos na nung uh, late 80s and 90s, so early 90s. Were you part of the Manonuri? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, when, when when was it founded? Uh, mid seventies. Oh. Up to I know, up to I, I think early eighties. Because when uh, when I when I did more films in the industry, I thought there was already a conflict of interest. <laughs> Being a part of the critics group and then also doing films, you know, in the magandang <laughs> So I, I uh, stopped from being a member in the 80s. But I remember the early 80s. The Manunuri was highly regarded, uh, especially when it began. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, at that time. Ngayon hindi ko alam. Yeah, serious critical studies of films. Uh, I think uh, that they, they have a place you know, in developing uh, the film culture in, of the country. Yeah. It, so, but we, we need to have more of these. You know, you serious critical studies. The, the problem is uh, we don't ha have much of these going on. Uh, 
because basically the f it's difficult to get hold of the films. They are not readily available. Uh, we don't have a national, a working national film archive. Mm -hmm. Okay, ABS has a good archive. It has its good collection, and um, it's a nice place to, to go I if you need to do some uh, serious study you know, mm -hmm. of, of film. Um, but you have to have some connection there. No? Um, of course, they're, they're open to you know, researchers, uh, but they don't have the entire. You know, it's not a national collection. Right, so we need a national film archive, and, and the Film Development Council is working on it, and uh, hopefully they they're going to see it through and really have a working national uh, film archive. Uh, but it's difficult to sell the idea to let, let's say to politicians, you know. Uh, who are beset with lots of political, economic, you know, and social problems. How do you sell the idea to them that a film archive is important, you know, that uh, we should have saved the Bomba films, you know, <laughs> or we should save uh, oh, what? Uh, the, the rom-coms that are being done, you know, we, we should archive them. How do you sell that idea? It's difficult. Oh, they they should just sit down and, and write, because there there's a that that's the best way to break into the industry by writing, whether for television or for film or for the multimedia, yeah, because we need good writers. We need good writers. There's always a need for that. There are many writers, but we need good writers. Okay, so uh, yeah, the. There, there are lots of uh, young filmmakers who want to direct, right? But not uh, many of them can write. So they need uh, still, you know, writers to work with them, to collaborate uh, with them. And that, that's a good way to, to, to break in, into filmmaking. And uh, I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm interested in in developing writers from different uh, social or economic strata, especially those coming from the from the lower, you know, economic uh, class, because they, they are, in, in my view, they they're the ones who can tell their stories, stories uh, better because mm -hmm. they've experienced them, and um, you know, the television writers and the movie writers can cannot. Uh, do these materials. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we, we should develop the, these writers coming from the different social economic classes. Yeah. Well, um, I, I'm sure uh, many young ones today have not seen the film, so they, they should try to uh, catch a glimpse of it, you know, watch it, and give it a chance, <laughs> right? <laughs> It may not be too enjoyable for them, uh, but uh, they, they should watch it um, maybe in the context of uh, the 70s, right? Uh, at that time, um, the, the industry was, was not exactly high up there. The, the industry was in the pits, you know, in, in the 60s especially, and then in 1970, uh, that's why the, the new generation of filmmakers, you know, came in uh, with this big ambition, you know, to do good films. And we were just part of, of that, uh, that uh, development. And so, you know, ambition, just to do good films. And, uh, well, today the the young filmmakers should also have that aim, I guess. They they also and, and they're more aware, you know, what's happening in the film world. They have access to all these films, right, on the internet. So they they should be more uh, uh, aware of what these good films are, you know, and and at the same time still be original, you know, and be relevant to our society.